and when the Amiga Commodore arrived on the scene in 1985, it didn't just enter the market, it pirouetted, kicked down the door, and demanded attention with a cheeky grin. This wasn't merely a computer, it was an audacious declaration of what the future of digital creativity and gaming could look like, wrapped up in a sleek, unassuming box. Amidst a backdrop of clunky business machines and stolid game systems, the Amiga felt like it had been beamed in from another decade, offering a tantalizing glimpse of the possibilities that lay beyond the next pixelated horizon. For many, the Amiga wasn't just another household appliance destined to gather dust in a loft. It was a gateway to uncharted artistic ventures and intense gaming sessions that stretched into the wee hours of the morning. Through this 1500-word odyssey, we will revive the whispering floppy disks, the boisterous crack of the joystick, and the collective gasp when witnessing the Amiga's graphical prowess for the first time. Hold on to your seats, or rather, your mouse mats, as we explore the vibrant history and enduring legacy of this iconic machine. Picture this. The year is 1985. The Cold War still sends a chill down the spine of the globe, and Madonna's Like a Virgin tops the charts. Into this era of uncertainty and bold fashion choices strides the Amiga Commodore, a machine that promised to dismantle the very concept of what a personal computer could be. Developed by a team led by the visionary engineer Jay Miner, the Amiga introduced multimedia capabilities that were unheard of at the time seamlessly blending sound, graphics, and processing power that could handle multiple tasks simultaneously. The advertisement proclaimed, Only Amiga makes it possible. A bold claim that, at the time, wasn't far from the truth. The Amiga could display up to 4,096 colors when most of its contemporaries struggled to muster a fraction of that palette. It was not just the technical specifications that made it a standout. It was the way it utilized them to create a user experience that felt both intuitive and powerful. As novelty turned into practicality, the Amiga carved its niche firmly among the creative and the curious. It attracted game developers, graphic artists, and amateur filmmakers who saw it not just as a tool, but as a canvas for their creative ventures. This period marked the turning point where computers started being considered essential tools for creatives a perception that persists in today's digital-driven world. At the heart of Amiga's appeal was its custom chipset, an ensemble of three co-processors named Agnes, Denise, and Paula. These weren't just components. They were the digital equivalent of the three musketeers, handling tasks assigned by the main CPU with flair and aplomb. High-resolution graphics and high-fidelity sound were the hallmarks of the Amiga, setting a new standard for what multimedia personal computers could achieve. The Workbench OS, with its graphical user interface, was a radical departure from the text-based commands prevalent at the time. It wasn't just about making things look pretty. The interface made computing more accessible and less formidable for the average user. This ease of use combined with superior graphics capabilities, made the Amiga a particularly attractive choice for software developers and casual users alike. Significantly, Amiga's hardware facilitated the development of groundbreaking software, fostering a generation of timeless games, applications, and creative tools. Classics like Shadow of the Beast and Lemmings owe their existence to the prowess of the Amiga, challenging the boundaries of storytelling and eliciting amazed responses from all who interacted with them. The rise of the Amiga coincided with a seismic shift in the gaming and multimedia landscape. Its advanced graphics and sound capabilities turned heads, but it was the passionate community of users that breathed life into this machine. Amiga users were not just passive consumers, they were enthusiastic evangelists, sharing tips, creating content, and pushing the machine to its limits. Memorable gaming experiences crafted on the Amiga fostered a strong sense of community. 
This community thrived both offline in bustling computer clubs and online in spirited forum debates and early internet chat rooms, tales of marathon gaming sessions, demo scene competitions, and collaborative creative projects are the stuff of legend, still spoken of in reverent tones within gaming circles. Perhaps more impressively, the Amiga also left its mark on pop culture, with its technology underpinning some of the era's most significant visual effects in film and television. It demonstrated that computers could be more than just utilitarian devices. They could be instruments of artistic expression and cultural significance. Even though the commercial trajectory of the Amiga took a downturn in the 1990s, its legacy is anything but forgotten. Renewed interest in retro computing and the nostalgia for 16-bit graphics have led to a vibrant resurgence of the Amiga community. Today, numerous emulators allow fans to experience Amiga games on contemporary hardware, while original Amiga machines are treated with the reverence typically reserved for fine art. Beyond nostalgia, the principles that Amiga championed of graphical excellence and user-friendly computing continue to influence modern software development and gaming. Discussions on forums and social media often circle back to how Amiga was ahead of its time. Its influence is evident in the user-centered design of modern operating systems and in the graphics-driven focus of current gaming consoles. As long as there are screens that light up and games that captivate, the spirit of Amiga, the little computer that could will continue to resonate through the corridors of digital culture.